Today we have a very challenging project here. I have Shomo here, who is one of my alumni from my Indian Institute of Technology. He is a much younger graduate than I am. <laughs> but we have that in common, but we also have something else in common, which is a passion for bonsai. Now, you also buy trees, not always for me, but this is purchased from someone. And you told me that this was purchased from, I think, someone who was giving up bonsai, is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but I do recognize this. This is a Bovernensis, the dwarf Scots pine, Pinus sylvestris Bovernensis. And this person's mother used to buy trees from me. And they collected quite a few specimens. I don't know what happened to it. So over the years, the branches must have died. Because my nursery has been going 37 years, this person must have bought it in the early days, about 30 years ago. So you can see the neglect, all the branches have died. And when Shomu brought it to me, I think two years ago, yes. during the pandemic, it was in a very, very sorry state. So the first thing we did was to put it in a large training pot so that it would recover. So it's like putting it in the ground, but a large pot gives you better control. And in the two years, it's come back ever so healthy. Look at it, bright green, absolutely bright green. It was sickly yellow, losing more and more branches. So the health of the tree is the most important thing. A lot of people don't care about that, but if you want the tree to survive, that's what you've got to do. While I'm talking about the health of the tree, another point I should mention is that sometimes when people do demonstrations, they pot it straight away and people never know what happens to these demonstration trees. I have good knowledge because I've been in this business for many, many years. Since the mid 70s, I was chairman of the British Bonsai Association. We used to invite lots of demonstrators and they do these big demonstrations. But I do know for a fact that more than half of the demonstration trees never survive. So that's another matter while we're talking about the health of the tree. So keeping the tree healthy is the first and most important thing. If you don't have a healthy tree, you don't have a bonsai. So now that we've brought it back to health, we've got to figure out how we can restyle it. It was originally a full tree with large branches, triangular shape. I think some of these branches have gone this way. The apex is a bit lost. And our problem now is to see what alternative designs there are for this tree. It's got a really old tree. Remember I told you, this tree I may have sold this lady about 30 years ago. Mm. I have a lot of these bovarenses which have been growing for about 40 or more years. So look at the craggy bark, lovely movement in the trunk. So there are all sorts of possibilities. So because Shobo is really learning bonsai from me, it's always best to ask the person what they have in mind so that I can figure out how they think and then I can suggest ways on how there are other solutions. Okay, so far away and let me know what you could do with it. With uh, the foliage being more concentrated at the top and such nice movement, I think the tree should look good in a literati style. Why? Because there are no branches here. There are no branches here and okay. we make them into Yeah, and it's got nice movement. Yeah, I largely agree. Uh, so, if you... Okay, let's look at it. <clears throat> Tell me how the design would be, which would be the front. This could be because of the movement. Because of the movement like this. Yeah. This could be a front. Mm -hmm. No, I'm more inclined to yeah. like this. Angle. Like this. Yes. Yeah, that's a possibility. What do you think? Yes. This is nice. And how would you do, arrange the other branches? <coughs> so get rid of this one. Yeah. Maybe get this to be short gin. Mm. I think this one also could be gin or I just want to emphasize this that line. That line. <clears throat> okay. All right. Before we go too far, I've always taught people how 
to get different perspectives. Never accept one solution. Every tree, every problem has more than one solution. So if you look at this tree, we can see straight away, if you want it to be radical, you can make just this part a tree. Let me bring the proverbial white plastic bag. Have a close look at that yeah. if possible. <laughs> that would be bad. There are so many, many possibilities. Just having that is also a, po a possibility, okay. Mm -hmm. And then also having just that is also a possibility. You don't have such a big tree. Mm -hmm. You see, there's so many possibilities, endless possibilities. You can still get a literati effect like that if you didn't want a tall tree. So that is a possibility. We still got this very radical movement there. And now, of course, as you say, you can have that as a possibility and probably bring some of these branches down. So, now that I've put the cat among the pigeons, <laughs> you have a big problem in front of you. You can see, I'm trying to show people how to think, you know. Uh, so, I'm not saying that should be the thing, but that is a possibility. And remember that the literati is a very sparse style. Yeah. This is also very nice. It's almost like a literati windswept style, mm. almost. You see? Yeah, I can see. I can see this thing now. And you want to make this dead wood or you want to get rid of the entire? I don't know. We have to think about that. <laughs> but I can see that it seems a waste when you have such a beautiful top. Why waste it? You know. So this is where. Interesting trees, or I could, should call them problem trees, are always kept aside and every time you pass you have a look and think, what shall I do with it? You know? <laughs> so this is a case in point. Now that I've pointed out to you, I've put you in a real spot, haven't I? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Let's see what Josh thinks. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I like the short idea. <laughs> you like the short idea. It's not my tree though. <laughs> I know, it's very easy when yeah. it's not your tree. That's why masters who work on other people's trees have so much freedom. It's not their tree. Yeah. If it's your own tree, you have a big problem. Yeah. But I can see the beauty of the top. The top we've taken all the trouble to grow it so healthy. Again. Good type of. Huh? Uh, why should we really waste it? The trouble is if you use the top, all this becomes redundant, you know? Because, oh, although this is pretty, this is pretty. Or you could use all the elements and still give it a literati type style. It can still look nice with all these elements. But it becomes distracting if you have too many it becomes very distracting. But then there's a problem of having too many big trees, you know, this becomes a big tree. I think what we should do Mm -hmm. We should do some nice wiring to these two, see how it turns out, and forget about this part. If you don't like it, then we can uh, revert to that. Okay. I'd see that, <laughs> so we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to wire these and these. All right, so, so we've wired now. these branches, so let's see what shape we can create from that. If you use the right grade of wire, you can virtually achieve anything you wish. Most of these little pads and branches, remember, they always have to have a little conical shape. You can make it absolutely flat, but I think they are more interesting if they are like a cone shape.
just play around with the shape till you feel it looks right. The main thing is to make sure that you've used the right grade of wire. If you don't use the right grade of wire, then you're struggling. We may need to change the grid of wire on that because I'm afraid to bend it with that thin wire. We may need to put a double, so we'll wait a bit. This piece bothers me. The more I look at it, the more I'm not happy with it. A lot of people would keep this and make driftwood. And people who do gins, I'm speaking my mind quite frankly, because not many people like to say it, but many of the carvers who do the carving, do it for carving's sake. And they find a piece of wood, they say, oh, I must carve it, I must carve it. But this is one instance where even if you carved it, you can make some movement there, but this part is much too straight in comparison with the rest of the other trunk. Can you see? Yep. This part is absolutely straight. So it's out of character with the rest of the tree. So if even if I did that, it wouldn't look right. Now, should you abandon that thing, you can still revert to the tall option of the literati. So I don't know how you want to leave it, you know? It's one of those things, you may want to just keep it and play with it. Nothing lost by keeping it. You can keep experimenting and wire that top and see how it looks and, and see what effect you could get. The choice is yours. Uh, but if it was my tree, I would probably, even these jeans on this side, they're much too long. Even if they were made short, they wouldn't look quite right. It's going this way. All the direction is that way. Why do you want something going that way? Uh, no, it, it will look like a very nice Windsor tree if you just keep these two. I guess. Or why don't we try another head like that? Do you want to have a go? Wiring practice? Wire the top and see if there's a third head? See, this is where we're trying different ideas. The, the enjoyment of ones are experimenting and trying. If you don't try, you don't know. So why don't we, as a warrior exercise, why that top and see the third tier to be a windswept and see how it goes. Let's do that. Try the triple head. And I think we can bite the bullet. In case we want to come back to that. But we'll forget this and just wire these bits. All right. So we're going to wire this and that and then see how it goes. All right. So we've done a little bit of wiring to the top to just to see what would we get from doing like a three-tier literati. 
And Josh here put it at an angle. Again, if you can help me, we will pop it up. Changing the angle is one of the very basic, simple things that you can do when you want to get a different perspective. It gives a different feel to the movement. When we had it flat, this was looking very straight. But simply putting it at an angle and bending it this way, it looks less straight. So just by doing that, we have got rid, partly got rid of that problem. So now we've got this three-tier effect. We haven't finished doing all the branches as we would wish. It's just a question of arranging them. So that basically is what we call the three-tiered windswept. And because we've changed the angle, we've got to change these as well. But while it grows, you can always do that. And we're trying that three-tier windswept. But once you start having that triple tier, that literati character I feel has gone astray, got a bit lost. I still think you don't need the right hand side. It should still be confined to this side, like that. But if we revert to our initial design, you've got this as well, this effect like that. So you see there's so many choices you can do. That is really sparse. That is really sparse. This is fuller. Now, I'm not a great believer in taking rash decisions. Although I always say you've got to bite the bullet and do this and that. But very often you should contemplate and reflect on what you're doing rather than just plunge headlong. So as I say, if it was my tree, I would leave it like this for a while. Mm. Live with it. See how you like it. Because you might regret that I shouldn't have cut that off. And see how it changes. Even this you can leave and do something with that. So because it's a hobby, you can keep still practicing here and there, do this and that, and then let it evolve. So I'm not here to try and show how clever I am to make a complete tree. It is to show you how to enjoy the tree, the thinking process, the process of evolving the design, creating design. So we've got that far, and I hope you've liked that, you know? So, uh, as I say, let's leave it like that. And as for the horticultural aspect, I wouldn't rush to put it in a small pot just yet. Let it get even stronger in this pot. We've taken all the trouble to put it in this lovely growing training pot. It's picked up in health. Let it pick up some more and then revert to it again next year. So we've done as much as we can. It's a very respectable tree like this. So then the journey of the tree goes on yep. another step. And if you want to prop it at that angle, you can either keep it propped up in your display like this, or come the spring, just take it out and tilt it in the pot so that it's more propped up at this angle. So there we are. So there's another little lesson you have in how to do the bonsai. So I've got Josh to do some wiring so you can see what we've done. We've ended now with almost a conventional tree but the lines are very dramatic. So what originally start off, started off as a literati exercise has ended up as a conventional tree with a triangular shape, beautiful line and form and the beauty of this tree is that the lines are very very nice, very dramatic lines. So, as I said, it's not our tree, it's a customer's tree. And I did advise him to enjoy the tree and let it evolve. So what we started off originally, if we can remind you, we were looking at this side as the tree. So to recap, one option was to do the dramatic thing like that 
just one branch, that is one solution. Second solution was to do this, like a double literati that way. So that was one possibility. And then we decided to leave the whole top and do more or less a conventional tree. So this looking at this side and then we turn the tree around and we discovered that this side is as nice if not nicer. <laughs> Look at it. So many different facets of the tree. So this is even nicer. Very dramatic lines, very much literati style if you leave all these little bits. But since it's a customer's tree, we advised him to leave it so that it can evolve and he can enjoy it and play with it as he sees fit. So there you are. So remember that this is only a teaching video to show you how to think, how to choose the different options, and the rest is up to you. So this is the absolute final thing. Let me show you a few uh, other things, all the prunings. I love to keep them so that I do little flower arranging to put on my desk. Another one, this is an expensive Japanese pot, primitive pot. And while I was playing around, this is one of those ficuses, which was like two foot high. Look at the dense structure I've created. And I'm waiting for the owner to come back. So there are lots of little projects we follow up. So this was a good morning's work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Complete one.